L D N R B S. We are in the building, and you know what? We have a special guest. But you know what? I'm a, I'm a really build up for this one. Special, I'm a build up. Guest. I'm a build up, guys. L D N R B S. We have M Ski Bushkin M-Ski. in the build. M C Bushkin in the building. <laughs> My gosh! Let's clap it out. Let's clap it out. Oh. Hey, hey. Now listen, I'm always gonna come with my little Tyrone annoying like um, stories before we get into the interview. I got an older brother that was obsessed with Garage. Uh-huh. Obsessed <laughs> with Garage. And when that Heartless Chew came out, I was a little Tyrone literally just shacking out like, yeah, this Heartless tune, I'm vibing. Now I'm in front of him. So, tell us about the journey from the start. We want to know so much when it comes to Heartless Crew and how Heartless Crew came together back in this golden age. Boy, you know, it was that back in secondary school, you know, man. Yeah, yeah I linked up with Fonty, we went to Holloway Boys School, mm. and I thought it was a man in school. Like, when it comes to music, yeah. he, not even in school, he's still the man now. The man, anything <laughs> the man touches, that like gold. Jeez. But yeah, them time there. He was like, um, he was playing steel pan in school. He could play the drums. He could play the guitar. Like he was just on everything musical. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was another brother in my class, um, David Ogwan, okay. and he was like the brain box in my class. Yeah. You understand? So I, I went to the two man them. I said, Yo, can we start a little sound system? Them times it was like mm-hmm. all about youth sounds. That's yeah. what it used to be called, youth sounds. Mm-hmm. So yeah, can we start our own youth sound? Basically, my brother had like equipment and records, mm-hmm. and I, I hollered Fonty first. Fonty was bang on it, mm-hmm. and then I hollered Ogwan, and Ogwan was bang on it as well and my idea I was kind of like the hype man basically yeah, yeah. we've seen ideas. that yeah we've seen yeah. that but my idea was that boy mm-hmm. with one his musical talent and Ogwan's brain box thing yeah. you understand know yeah we're gonna make some heartless crew peas out of this yeah, yeah that was heartless crew that was that yeah. back where did the name come from come from too yeah I thought of the name you know I mean yes. at them times it was um, like we had a couple names first you know, yeah. first we had Wicked Intention okay. and then we had a name called Destruction basically okay why are they all so negative because <laughs> because you're really you come in so happy and so yeah. lively. You know what? It was. It's weird because back then, like all the youth sound systems and in general sound systems, yeah. all the names and sound systems were all like because it was clashing and yeah. warting. You understand? Uh-huh. So it was Black Cat and Stone Love and you understand uh-huh. Exodus and all these uh-huh. kind of names like that. You understand? Over here you had Black Mafia. You yeah. understand? And all these kind of names. So uh-huh. we had to come with a name. That could hold, hold its own and fit yeah. in the sense so the first two names was all right and then when i come with heartless crew now hey jeez that jeez. back in them time they're like yes. 92 yes nothing that, that just sounded so wicked that like, there was nothing heartless like crew. that like That's every cold. i wanted to be a part of heartless crew i was young <laughs> yeah i was like i wanted to be heartless man <laughs> yeah at the, at the height of heartless crew what do you feel, feel like you brought to the uk culture at the height yeah um I mean, we just bang vibes, really, and truly, you know. It's just, like, man just coming with a different energy and a vibe, and, I mean, what it was, as a sound system, we were used to playing everything and playing the whole night, basically. So, I mean, we was playing from swing. At them times, it was swing beat, you understand? This kind of even before army swing beat kind of times, you understand? Swing beat? Yeah, then, um... Like it was Raga, we was playing Raga, yeah. Raga it's an acid, acid yeah. drum and bass. I spoke to a lot of people, and a lot of people from back then is telling me you guys were. I, I used to say, so solid, heartless crew, page you go. They all said heartless. Yeah. Mm. Even my dad couldn't chat to us. Hey. <laughs> Got that boy. Yeah, hey. No, this is me, but yeah, man, yeah. it is what it is. Even I've seen a couple of um, the clashes that you guys, even the page you go clash. Classic. Like, yeah. How did how did that happen? Classic. Um, again, you, you know what it was at the time. There was like a little. Um, I mean, I'll go back to the beginning because people don't know the history of it yet. Yeah. Mm. Like, the real essence of how that clash started, Major Ace was biting some of my lyrics. Again, like, mm. these men used to listen to us on the radio, you understand? And in a way, it, there's nothing wrong with it because we're all fans of each other yeah. in a way, you understand? So, where man's listening, but sometimes man listening too hard, a man starts to get <laughs> too comfortable with man's <laughs> lyrics, you understand? And Major Ace is biting one or two of the lyrics there, man. I've caught him, mm. not caught him like that, I shouldn't say it like that. I've met up with him, yeah. you understand? I've raved, I said to him, yo, G. Come on, man. Ease off my thing, you know. Mm. You can't just bite up man's style like that. No, yeah. man, that ain't that. You know what I'm saying? The man said, yo, yo, cool, cuz you're very rare. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And then, again, man still biting up the lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, we, we had a little clash at Rumble first mm-hmm. and we, we, we shut them down there. But this is like way back in the day. So this is way before hype was exposed yeah. to an extent. They weren't really, we weren't getting recorded. Then we catch him again at Temple. Mm. And, we, and we shut them down. That was the one, the wicked shut down. But again, there ain't no material, no camera phones or yeah. nothing to really document, document it. You understand? Yeah. So that was that. And then again, the wickedest one was where we see them at Destiny's Watford. 
You understand? And what, what happened there? We we used to roll with that like big on trust. We've come yeah. to the red raves overly jam. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone couldn't get in one time because it's just bare confusion outside. But me, I managed to wrangle my way in and <laughs> slip through. Yeah. So I've got in a good maybe 15, 20 minutes before the rest of the lot. Yeah, son. So when I'm in there now, I'm just, I'm at the back. I'm like, wow, I'm just pre in the vibes now. But these man on the stage, page you go, yeah. and they're running barely cool. A funny antics, you understand? Mm-hmm. Oh, heartless, this, that, and I'm like, well, if you don't come soon, we're going to clap your wages. And <laughs> barely cool, funny Jeez. thing, but it's like, if you're in there, you wouldn't necessarily pick it up. I'm an MC, and I'm listening, obviously, you understand? And so I'm hearing all the little snide remarks. Mm-hmm. So anyway, it's got to a point I'm saying to myself, oh, forget this, let me just go and touch the stage, you hit me? Mm. So I've gone on to the stage, but just how God works, the timing just worked out. As I've gone to touch the stage, Fonny and Mo was in the wave now, so we're okay. all kind of, you understand? Know, I've touched the mic, give him a little one, two, mm-hmm. and then, yeah, the rest is on the, it's on the tape there, so yeah. man can <laughs> air it and whatever still. So, so how, how, like, um, Garage transitioned into grime music to what we hear now? Would you say you're the originators do you even, to that? Do you, how do you feel about grime? As a whole, yeah. I mean, what being one of the classics from Garage, how do you feel about that? Yeah, man, I love Grime, man, I love the movement and the engine. Yeah, in a way, it's it's derived from what we was doing. I mean, mm. we, yeah, we was we, we changed the Garage kind of thing, where the way we was emceeing and the vibe we brought to Garage. And I mean, in a way, what it is this whole wave and sound was taking the UK by storm now, Grime and you know, that kind of thing. That that in a way did derive from Heart Because what we used to do in the raves is vibes up and when you come to our raves you get jungle yeah. you understand you're going to get army you're going to get bashment you understand we, yeah the, the whole mix whole so load we, of girls the, <laughs> all right then and we mix it up like a crisp biscuit we used to call it crisp biscuit <laughs> and what up happened like crisp biscuit yeah like the crisp biscuit yeah. one that was all right see yeah. Yeah, my whole snows yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so that was like the flavor and what it was everyone all the Top man them used to come to the rave, yeah, and all the top people them used to come to the rave. And we used to make it vibe to a point where man used to say, Raw, this is grimy, this is grimy. You understand? It's a vibe what man used to bring that man used to say, Raw, this is grimy. Mm. You understand? And from there the things evolved, you understand? I wouldn't say that we made grime, you understand? Yeah. We didn't actually name it grime, but what we was doing at Fine. that particular time, man was saying, Raw, this is vibes grimy, and it yeah. was the vibes, you understand? Mm-hmm. And that vibes is translated. I mean, Wiley says it himself wow. in his interviews, I've yeah, said, Raw, if man weren't. Yeah. Listening to man to an extent, the thing might have not been how it is. Yeah. How long were you working before a uh, label approached you guys to to sign you guys, and how did that go? Um, we was working. Well, let's say from '92, and we got signed in I think 2001, ah. basically. So it was a good again with music. It, People just hear the hype and see the hype, but they don't really know the groundwork to yeah. go into it. Well, I mean, we was slaving for long, not getting paid. You understand? We used to like all three of us. This is by the time Mo joined the sound. You understand? And let's just say ninety-five. Them kind of time. We're getting, we're playing out. We're not even. We're getting sometimes like twenty pound and foolish like that. Sometimes we're not even getting no money yet. Me mm. and me and Font used to walk home and send Mo in a cab with the records because Mo lived the furthest. You understand? And mm. that little things like that, grinding, grinding, grinding for years. You understand? I remember we, when we got. 50 pound the end and then we started to get 300 pound after you got signed do you feel like it was a lot easier did they help with the creativity or mm, do, that's do you an think interesting that point especially around that from time. being as creative as yeah. you could be yeah now they definitely hindered us in a way yeah, and so we got signed up we got signed up i mean it was a partly our mistake we got signed up for a hell of a lot of money mm. basically and at the time we took the deal that offered us the most money mm. yeah and so which Offer us the most money, but the least kind of creative control. Co- yeah, exactly mm-hmm. that. So, what I, kind of things would they say to you as such when you were signed? Um, that's a, the weird thing about it. They wouldn't really say too much. I mean, what it was, we're very on, like, entrepreneurial. You yeah. understand? So we had done like we made our name and yes, yeah, so just off sheer hard work and having an idea and intention basically. And even when we got signed up, we had a load of money anyway. You understand? Yeah. Like we was making good money. We had our own office run it. So when we got signed up. Um, they the sign up was supposed to be they're gonna take us to Middle England and blow us up differently. And what their man have done, and this is like one of our main things, they man have put us in a, like a fancy space cruise and sent us back into like Moss Side Manchester. Where well, we've nah. been playing in these <laughs> areas <laughs> for like the last yeah. three years of our own back here in San. And then man just packaged us up in a fancy van and sent us back to places we was already doing and ground we had already covered yeah. in San. So it was like a bit of a friction and us being young that time in a way being a bit arrogant because we had built up our stuff and we had a bit of an ego you know mm. and they might have telling us certain things we're like wow but you might not tell us you ain't doing nothing that we haven't really done and yeah. whatever you might supposed to be taking us further afield and mm-hmm. so it was a bit frictional we were only like 
maybe 21, 20. And I had a question too. In this day and age, I guess anyone that's big or the new artist, they've got Twitter, they've got Instagram. What do you reckon it would have been like at the time if you had Twitter? Boy, it would have been mad. <laughs> yeah, it would have been a mad thing. The man. stories I would have liked to yeah. have heard, man. <laughs> it would be a different frenzy, man. I mean, that time there, it was just... It, pirate radio yep. and the tapes were travelling yeah, and our tapes were travelling up to Birmingham and Manchester that's how we was getting bookings in these places just of like TDK 90s and yeah. and we never had that little access and videos and stuff like that but was it Mission was it Mission it was Mission yeah, Mission FM 90.6 yeah yeah, oh, yeah. 906 so yeah, we, got the we got the can I want to talk too. about that real quick because back in the day pirate radio was the thing that was yeah the thing. that was, was on, yes and then after when you lot split up yeah. It was just you and Fonzie. Yep. You ended up on Rinse, right? Yeah, we went on Rinse as well, yeah. What was that like? What was it, how was it different to I mean being on pirate radio? Rinse at that time was still a pirate, funny enough. So mm. it wasn't that different. I mean at towards the end they started to bring in a few little rules and us man they said, you know what, we're gonna cut and do our own thing. I mean I tell you what we was on BBC One Extra when it yeah. first launched. So they headhunted us for that and they headhunted that like, at the time all the time our top DJs on the road I put them on one extra mm-hmm. and we was on that and when we went on to that that really after the record label it was like two blows like a ribs and a, one in the chin basically the record label <laughs> was a chin and that one there was like a ribs yeah. booming yeah. you understand <laughs> yeah because being on there it was like really they, they proper change our style mm. we had a producer and they were coming and giving us pieces of paper to read live on air and it's just seriously yeah I mean that's how it is on yeah. legal yeah. radio but yeah. to us remember we've come from pirate radio where we're smoking and yeah. jumping up we're thumping the music loud and we're mm. screaming and doing all sorts of things bringing girls back and mm. yeah just doing our own mm. party vibe and when we went to one extra it's like raw wow, they've got a, you can only play a few of your own tunes and you've got to turn up two hours before the show and you've got to leave two hours after the show and we're like why on earth on a Sunday <laughs> night would we stay here two hours after our show and they're saying to debrief and mad thing what's coming up for yourself and yeah what's coming up why have you got in, any projects coming up any shows yeah I mean bag of shows every weekend I mean Heartless Crew's back together now so we've got some yes. really big ones uh, as the yeah, Heartless yeah. Crew um, as well um, but my main focus right now my baby is um, it's my affirmation I say it every day basically I'm running the number one independent record label for urban music in the UK so that's my little baby man I'm just working on that day and night and, and producing some um, my own tunes and I've got a few artists around me and yeah man I just want to put out good music you know, and then share it with the world you know, also, don't you have some cigars or something that you're doing yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear that yeah yeah that's the next second. like I said I'm always been on this entrepreneurial thing man yeah, and okay. I just enjoy making money so yeah um, check out Bossy Vapors yeah. it was Bossy Cigars but they're bringing in some new laws in the UK um, in regards to vaping and the cigars so we've had to kind of go back and change I ain't hyping it up too much but mm. we've changed in, in from a cigar now we'll come with the E the juice the vape juice mm. basically so that's the new local cool venture and yeah we're just getting that all tested Jeez. and yeah mm. man this summer we're gonna eat them hard so again how's the relationship with um Page ago is so solid and everyone now because back then there was a lot of clashing and stuff. How's yeah, it that's real. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's no there's bypass. Like, there was, there was <laughs> the whole, really the whole, whole Napa, one. the whole Napa thing with yep. so solid. What, what happened there? Um, I mean, again, it's stories people don't understand. No man, and it's not again, man, are proud of it. Being young and the whole yeah. hype and the beef and so me and Major Ace catch up out in Iron Napa mm. and it was a little altercation. Let's just say, mm-hmm. boom, yeah, and so then. So that was that, and then on the back of that, at the time, they, they were actually signed to Soul Solid, yeah. you understand? So Mega's come up, and mm-hmm. me and him have had a little talk as well, and it's, you understand? Look, it wasn't any, yeah. it was bad blood at the time, but I mean, we're all big men now, we're all friends, you understand? We're not the best friends, but I mm-hmm. mean, we're all good, you understand? You. All on a level, you understand? I chat to Mega Man, you understand? I rate him as well, I rate him highly, funny enough, much as I say all these things, I rate him still, because my man is a very intelligent man in this, in this business, you understand? And also Major A, chat to him we've done raids to give him promotion and stuff like that so yeah man it's all love now man you know my thing peace love and zoom zoom and peace love and zoom zoom how you mean yeah but yeah no I said I said on air earlier I said to everyone on air I want you to teach me to be a garage MC even if even if just so like little one two ad lib Mm. On a, a deeper ad lib, not anything that everyone's been doing. Yeah, okay, that might be in. hard work. Okay, yeah, yeah, he's got yeah. Bars. He's got bars. He always says he's got. Bars. Oh, yeah. see, so see, when I'm in the presence of bars, we're gonna spray. We're gonna spray. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna chill out here <laughs> before I get spun out here. Mm-hmm. I ain't trying to get spun, but a beer wanting to be taught. Like, yeah, no, I do. You know, like listen, yeah. Growing up, <laughs> I listened to Garage a lot. 
a yes, lot, a lot, a lot. Same. And I just can't MC. Like I just don't know why I can't do it. No, man. Now I've got you, legend in the building. Well, someone, can, someone that can teach me a little something. I don't know exactly how to teach, but <laughs> I know the I know the <laughs> first <laughs> thing is that I try and teach my kids this. You know, that we don't use the word can't. You understand? There's no can't. You understand? So it's just can and yeah. I will. Yeah. You understand? Okay, cool. And I'm going to. So, yeah, go. so yes, that's the that would be my first little tip of how to MC. Okay, Even when cool. you were younger, do you feel like you could have seen what happened? Happen? Did you feel like you saw it happening, like you rapping and as a whole, or even spitting? Do you um, reckon that was, or do you think you just stumbled across? I kind of, um, I mean, I was always like entertainment, and I always like the limelight, and I'm just always been kind of popular in a way and loud, you understand? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, ne- necessarily knew I was going to be an MC, mm-hmm. but as soon as I got a taste for it, mm-hmm. I was like, "Whoa, this is for <laughs> me, G." So, so, you know, after getting signed, going back to when you got signed, yeah. did you um, nowadays when most artists get signed and they they get a big label on um, have their back? They pursue trying to break through to America. Did you yeah. have that vision back then? Mm. Yeah, was I mean, Europe we, we wanted to. I mean, we was doing bits and bobs in in Europe already. We actually went to America and done mm. something out like in Miami with D12. Um, Mad. Yeah, and that was that, that was good. I mean, obviously, yeah, man, still looking to crack America, you know. But there we go. F- again, because it's all gone round. First thing first, you have to start at home, yeah, and so, so man looking to crack back the UK and so, and set back the levels of the UK, and then we take it further. For right now, the USA and all, everywhere else has got the eye on the UK right now. You know, it's yeah. just about I timing, yeah, and so, and so everyone is interested in our vibe, yes, yeah, so, and we've ha- we've got the thing right now. Who have you been listening to listening to in the UK? Like, who would you who do you rate right now in the music scene? Well, I rate Chipmunk. You know, my Jeez. is yeah. too hard. Yeah, Jeez. he's like <laughs> don't Chip run out is of bars. Hard, you mean the I man? Yeah. That is hard. Oh, I have to be Skepta as well. Yeah, Skepta's love, a big reward, yeah, yeah, love what Skepta's doing, man. You understand? And you know, again, my man hollered man the other day to come and feature on sort of something he was doing. And yeah. again, still paying homage. And the whole thing just goes round and round. Mm-hmm. You know, each one teach one. So yeah, man, I love what Skepta's doing. Um, well, it's gigs. I like yeah, gigs. Yeah, yeah, is little yeah. thing right now as well. Um, yeah, man, a couple people, but couple people. yeah, who else could I say right now? AJ Tracy's going yeah, hard, yeah, Dave's yeah, yeah. going hard. I like don't want to hear Bushkin talk, shouting out AJ Tracy. Yeah. That's proper, like, uh, yeah, I, I, I that, like though. that. No, man, you know, I, I listen to everything, you yeah, know, I keep go. my ears to the ground. Uh-huh. I'm always out and about, you know, and I live on the road, so I'm hey. out and I love to see what's going on and, and catch the hype. So, yeah, man, but in general, the whole UK right now is firing north, east, yeah, west, south, you know, and out of London. Everyone's on this thing, the world watching us right now man mm-hmm. it's, and it's about time and we, we about actually time. deserve it you hear me mm-hmm. but Bushkin tell us what's happening in the future tell us what's going to happen next where are you heading because um, we all champion you yeah man this weekend I'm up in Birmingham hey. you understand big up Flex and Live All I'm up there in Sugar Sweet Birmingham Wall Street for that one there um the next big thing you don't need to look out for, in mm-hmm. fact, 10th of December, mm-hmm. we're in Birmingham again as a Heartless Crew. So that's for the like, main event up there. It's called 0231. We're headlining alongside Predator for that one. That's going to be our next sick thing. Jeez. Rainbow venue. Look out for the big, dirty, stinking thing. We're Jeez. supporting Corrupt. Yeah. <laughs> Come yeah. on, I ain't. Yeah. I'm into that as well. Yeah, we're supporting we're Corrupt. Supporting them. Them. Yeah, Brixton Academy. Hey. That's going to be our next match. That's going to be sold out. I, I love Corrupt. Yeah. I love Corrupt. Corrupt's done a lot for the UK scene, you know. Yeah, man, they're pushing. It, they brought back a lot, a lot, and they brought a lot of old school people, old school yeah. heads, that's back right. to the forefront. No, As man. they should be. No, yeah. that's right, man. They come mm-hmm. full circle. So, yeah, man, we're on that show there, oh, 70 for so December. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a big one for Rinse oh, FM oh. on. Um, Boxing Day, that's Boxing. Ministry of Sound Ooh, as well. Yeah, yeah there's loads. Um, we've Rainbow. been added to the Annie Mac mm-hmm. um, Festival, mm-hmm. Lost and Found in Malta next year. That is a yeah. big yeah. deal. Nice. Snow bombing next year also in Austria. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, there's a bag of things going on still. What man. we've learned from today is Bushkin ain't stopping for no one. Can't, can't stop, stop man. You said it from the start. Yeah. Can't. We didn't do that word. Can't it. tired, man. You mm-hmm. mean, yeah, with well, this honest thing, man. So LDN, RBS, well, MC this, Bushkin. What's your yeah. socials? Your yeah. socials? Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Link me up on the Social yeah. media, um, I'm on there and on, on the Snapchat as Ricky Black R I K I B 
B-L-A-C Also on um, I'm Facebook I'm adding you now Just yeah, adding, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm adding you now Link up Yeah man Facebook same name Ricky Black R-I-K-I-B-L-A-C And then link me up on Twitter And um, Instagram As MC Bushkin And yeah man I'm always uh, All over the social medias man I'm always chatting to people And yeah Using it as it should be used man as Talking to people be. And linking and networking man So yep. yeah yep. Link yep. up Link up new friends. Yep. No man bless you Thank you for having me as well Bless Bless Big up the studio crew man Thank you I feel inspired. I feel inspired. Love. Love.